listening to Michael Savage Archives on Really Big Something Channel. August 20th, 2009. And welcome to the Savage Nation. This is uh, yours truly, Michael Savage. On the very day that the mastermind of the Pan Am bombing over Lockerbie, Scotland, was released to a hero's welcome in Libya, the very same day that the same left-wing radical labor government on the Gordon Brown decided to release the man who killed hundreds to his home in Libya, where he arrived to a hero's welcome, the very same government that released the Lockerbie bomber for compassionate reasons has denied Michael Savage his freedom of movement and his freedom of speech. Now, I want to pause right here. You've heard it all before. You haven't heard it all before. In a world of hype and in a world of hype artists, it's very difficult for the average listener to know what's true, what's false, what's real, uh, what's uh, you know an act, what, what's, uh, what they should be concerned about. I recognize that. But what if there really is such a case of an innocent man being targeted by an illegitimate government strictly to placate the radical Muslims in that nation out of fear that the radical Muslims will know that they've been namely uh, picked on for good reasons because you've got people there marching around screaming death to Britain, uh, death to the USA, overthrow Britain, blah, 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 we will kill you, we will do this. You've seen the signs, you've heard it. So the British government is afraid of them as they should be. But in order to balance this list of excluded individuals, they choose a white man, a conservative from America who has a radio show, in order to balance the list. Now you would say, well, they have a right to do it. No, my friends, they don't have the right to do it. Don't jump to the conclusion that a nation has the right to exclude somebody simply on the basis of speech. And if this government was so concerned with their fine nation being a place that is an honor to come to, an honor to live in, as I'm sure it is for so many millions of, of Brits. Why would they free the Lockerbie bomber to go home to a hero's welcome uh, in, in, in Libya? It's interesting to me that I took yesterday off to work with my lawyers, my legal team. I thought I'd get a rest. I didn't. I got 12 to 15 hours of hell. I had 15 hours of hell and another 18 hours of no sleep. When I saw the new legal findings, which I'm going to talk about today on the Savage Nation, and we just posted a new letter that was released yesterday to Jackie Smith with demands in it and recommendations and demands. It's on michaelsavage.com. Now, you could say, what do I care about that I care about Obamacare? I do, too. I care about Obamacare, too. I understand what it is. It's socialized medicine. I understand that it's been discovered that Mr. Axelrod who is the uh, uh, chief of staff for Obama, and certain family members of his, allegedly are going to make millions of dollars from the health care push. Allegedly now. You understand that we can't uh, say that definitively, but even the Associated Press says that Obama's push for national health care overhaul is providing a financial windfall to Democratic consulting firms closely connected to the president and two top advisors, including David Axelrod. Now, of course, if this was Bush uh, and it was Karl Rove, Rove would be, would be history. But I'm not going to talk about that directly. I'm going to talk about this indirectly. Because the very same corruption that exists in this far-left government of Obama exists in the far-left government of Gordon Brown in England. And the very same corruption is being covered up here in the same way that it's being covered up there. And how do they cover their corruption here in America? They attack anybody who attacks Obama as being a racist. Anybody who criticizes Obama is a far-right, right-wing extremist. In England, what do they do? What do these British public school snobs do? And I say public school because in England, it's the reverse of here. If you're rich, you go to a public school, not a private school. British public school snots, who apparently have never worked a day in their life, have been found out in my legal research. And I am going to talk about the insanity of my having the fight to have my name taken off a list of murderers and terrorists, while a true murderer and terrorist, 
the Islamic fascist who was responsible for masterminding the Lockerbie bombing and the deaths of over 200 people it was released by the British government, and he went home to Libya to a hero's welcome. Have you seen the footage today of him getting on and off the plane in Scotland? Do you see them shaking his hand, the British governmental officials who hate me? The very same labor governmental officials who hate Michael Savage shook the hands of a real murderer. And he went home to a hero's welcome. The British government under Gordon Brown is suicidal. They have sympathy for those who kill their own people and antipathy for those that would defend them. In researching the emails going back and forth between these snotty public school brats in England, you're not going to believe what we found. I've told you some of it, but you haven't heard all of it. I want you to go to michaelsavage.com at your leisure and look at the new legal letter to Britain. I will summarize some of those points today as I go in and out of the news. The uh, memos are not going to be believed. You're not going to believe them when you read them. You have to see them. And I have to go back again to what I said to you before. That in a world of hype, a world of self-promoters, in a world of people trying to make a name for themselves, it's very difficult for you to take me seriously if you are a born skeptic as I am. I'm a born skeptic. I don't believe anybody, particularly anybody in the media. So it would be natural for you to have some skepticism about what I am saying, but I want you to try to not put aside your skepticism, but try to listen to what I'm saying to you. Just try for a minute. How do you square a government, the British Labour government, releasing the mastermind of the Lockerbie bombing, shaking his hand as he leaves Scotland, and putting me on a list of people to be banned because of my unacceptable behaviour? Now, I want you to understand that to the British government under Gordon Brown, speech has become behavior. Do you understand how Orwellian this is? Speech has become behavior. And my speech, although it has never called for violence, may be offensive, may be shocking, may be very offensive and very shocking, as I'm sure it is to many people. It is shocking and offensive to people. I'm aware of that. Do you know that what I found in those emails should make your hair stand up? Do you know that they took statements from my, the founding of my Paul Revere Society, such as a nation is defined by its borders, language, and culture, and they use that as evidence of why I should be banned from Britain? I'm not making this up. I swear to you. I swear to you. They said that because Michael Savage believes a nation is defined by its borders, its language, and its culture... He has engaged in hateful speech. He has engaged in unacceptable behavior. Because he believes in borders, language, and culture, he has provoked and incited violence. Do you have any idea what this means? It means that the liberals have become the most extreme form of, se of thought police. It means that the liberals have declared conservatives criminal. It means that the liberals in England have criminalized conservative thought and conservative speech, which is why every liberal who really believes in the liberal uh, credo should buy my book, Banned in Britain. You need it as a document. You need to see the proof. You need to see I'm not hyping you. And you need to share it with your liberal friends. It may finally awaken you from your slumber before it is too late. It just might save America from the fate that Britain is suffering under these, pri these public school snots. I want you to go to michaelsavage.com and read the new legal letter that was sent by my attorneys, the defamation claim to Jackie Smith. And then I want you to look at the secret emails. Well, I can't give them to you now, but I want you to see the cover copy, the table of contents, and the excerpt for Banned in Britain. And once you look at these documents and put them together, and then you combine them with the fact that the very same Labour government that did this to me, and remember what they did to me. You say, oh, big deal, you can't go to Britain. You didn't want to go anyway. Well, you have to see the larger point. That defies, excuse me, that denies me my freedom of movement, which is a, de a denial of my fundamental civil rights. It denies me a freedom of movement. Do you understand that? It's a denial of the European Commission on Human Rights, laws. It's a denial of the U.S. Bill of Rights. It's a denial of British law itself. It's a denial of everything that is decent about democracies. It is something you would see out of North Korea. 
Didn't North Korea just arrest two people for entering its soil that they didn't approve of politically? Weren't two journalists just released from North Korea by Bill Clinton because they dared wander into that sacred nation without permission? This is something for you to behold. The very same government of the United States of America under Hillary Clinton and Obama, Barack Obama that wants to continue the open border policy started by Bill Clinton and magnified and amplified by George Bush, the open borders with Mexico, where drug dealers can walk right across the border, says nothing about a legitimate American broadcaster with millions of followers being unable to go across the borders of Britain. Don't you see what's at stake here? Don't you understand what's at stake here? I am one man fighting an entire government. Don't you understand what's at stake? I hope you do. And I hope you understand this is not hype, nor do I care about selling a certain number of books because it will fatten my wallet. I hope you understand that I'm well past that point in my life. And I hope you understand that there's a greater principle in these shows about being banned in Britain and this one man's fight to free his name from this list of murderers and terrorists. I hope you understand. I'll be right back. All right, I want to do this with you. I want to take you inside a courtroom. I'm going to act as my own defense attorney. I'm going to ask you, the American people listening to the Savage Nation, conservative, libertarian, liberal, independent, uh, to be the jury. And I want to read something to you. We discovered the following memo are being passed back and forth before they put me on this list of murderers and terrorists. Listen to what one of them said. Savage has a show called The Savage Nation. His views are extreme. He considers immigration, liberalism, and Islam to be the most dangerous threats to the U.S. He broadcasts on approximately 350 stations and receives an estimated weekly audience of 8 million listeners. This is what they wrote to each other. He is the third most popular radio talk show host in America. Now listen very carefully, folks, members of the jury. Here's what they wrote to each other in a summary of why I should be banned from Britain and that my fundamental rights be denied. Quote, Savage is the founder of the Paul Revere Society, which according to its mission statement aims to, quote, to take back our borders, our language, and our traditional culture from the left, ero corroding our great nation, close quote. This was a hit on me because I am a conservative. Now, the very same government that took offense with me because I believe in borders, language, and culture, today released the terrorist mastermind behind the Lockerbie bombing. And I want you to listen to, to Scottish Justice Secretary Kenny McCaskill, another far leftist, explaining why he released the Lockerbie bomber. Listen to clip two. Our justice system demands that judgment be imposed, but compassion be available. Our beliefs dictate that justice be served, but mercy be shown. Compassion and mercy are about upholding the beliefs that we seek to live by, remaining true to our values as a people, no matter the severity of the provocation or the atrocity perpetrated. Rubbish. 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 Where is the compassion and mercy towards Michael Savage? You low-life lout, you. You release an actual murderer who masterminded the blowing up of an airplane and the killing of hundreds of people, saying that you did so out of compassion and mercy, while Michael Savage, because he is a conservative and he is a white male, receives no such compassion and no such mercy. You say that compassion and mercy are the beliefs that you seek to live by, and yet your cohorts in London have no compassion or mercy for a conservative named Michael Savage. That you colluded behind my back to destroy my name and reputation and to deny me free travel and free speech? And you didn't notify me? You didn't give me a chance to explain myself or answer as to whether these statements are actually true? This is your idea of compassion and mercy, Scottish Justice Kenny McCaskill? Listen to clip three now. For these reasons, and these reasons alone, it is my decision that Mr. Abdel Basset Ali Mohamed Al Megrahi, convicted in 2001 of the Lockerbie bombing, 
now terminally ill with prostate cancer, be released on compassionate grounds and are allowed to return to Libya to die. So in other words, if I had a terminal illness and I was going to die, you'd let me into your rotten, stinking nation? Is that what you would do? If I were terminally ill, you'd release me for compassionate grounds? Well, let me tell you something. I ain't going to die so fast. Let me tell you something, Mr. Justice. I'm not going to get sick so fast. And let me tell you something else. I'm going to fight you until the last breath in my mouth. I'll make sure my name is cleared, and I will name you and shame all of you. Before I am through, I will show the world what you have become. I will show them how you, how you have not only acted to defend your own people and your own honor, how you've acted not only to, def not, to not defend Britain, to not defend your borders, to not defend the English language, to not defend your culture, but to destroy it from within. Whether it be out of cowardice or treason, I'm not sure if it's a combination of one or the both or something else. You talk about compassion and mercy out of one side of your mouth while your cohorts in London show no such compassion and mercy to a man whose only crime is that he is an outspoken white male conservative and that is your idea of compassion and mercy? Ladies and gentlemen of the Savage Jury, I rest my case. I have been banned in Britain. If you think that they have not become a, a quasi-fascist state, I would like you to call me and tell me why. Savage. So, the very day that the, the British Liberal Party, and make no mistake about it, the Scottish government, although it's different than the uh, government in England, is a sister to the labor philosophy, the liberal philosophy. And they take the mastermind of the Lockerbie bombing, and they release him to Libya. He goes home to a hero's welcome. They say they did it out of compassion and mercy. And yet, for Michael Savage, white male conservative who believes in borders, language, and culture, I am a bigger enemy than a murderer. Yet they put me on a list of people to be banned, but not him. He's allowed in. Chicago, Dennis, you're on the Savage Nation. Uh, hey, Michael. Um, I think you're comparing apples and oranges. Your case and that other guy's case. I mean, he's an admitted terrorist, and he's dying from cancer. So, you know, there's no harm that he could produce anymore. You know, so yeah, they just... You said there's no harm in releasing him because he can do no harm anymore? That's what I think, yeah. He's just going to die. D you know? Dennis, how, how old are you, Dennis? Uh, 31. All right. Well, you act like a 15-year-old because he came home to a hero's welcome. He is a role model to future terrorists in Libya. He has shown that he beat the British system. He has made fools of the British people. Don't you see any of that? Uh, I assume that you are a Democrat, correct? Uh, I'm wavering between one and the other. I think there are right. How do you think Obama would react to this situation? Do you think that Obama... Th would say, yes, release the Lockerbie bomber out of compassion and mercy. Do you think that that's what Obama's position would be? I think so, yeah. All right, well, here's what, my friend. You're wrong on both accounts. Play clip five. We, we have been in contact with the Scottish government uh, in, indicating uh, that we objected to this. And uh, we thought it was a mistake. Uh, we're now in contact with the Libyan government and want to make sure that uh, if, in fact, this transfer has taken place, that... Uh, he's not welcomed back uh, in some way, but instead should be under house arrest. Uh, we've also obviously been in contact with the families of the Pan, uh, the Pan Am victims uh, and uh, indicated to them uh, that we don't think this was appropriate. So Obama was opposed to it after the fact because he understands what outrage there's going to be in America. So even liberals should be opposed to the release of the Lockerbie bomber, particularly when the Scottish Justice Kenny McCaskill had the gall to say he did so out of mercy, compassion and mercy, that those are the beliefs that the Labour government seeks to live by. How could they believe in compassion and mercy? How could they say that their government is built upon compassion and mercy and continue to keep Michael Savage on a list with known murderers and terrorists when in fact I did absolutely no crime? I committed no crime, remember that. It gets even worse. In the memos that are disclosed in my new book, Banned in Britain, we found the following from December 9, 2008, and you don't know about this. Quote, 
Option of disclosure, number six. Savage will not be notified of his exclusion. Let me repeat that. Savage will not be notified of his exclusion because his exact whereabouts are unknown. Now, I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, they say that I have the third largest show in America. I reach 8 to 10 million listeners. I've written 25 books, four, five, six bestsellers. And the very government that knows so much about me, so much about me that they want me to not come on their sacred soil, they can't find my whereabouts. They don't know where my syndicator is. They have no idea where any of my radio stations are. No, my friends, they didn't notify me of, of my exclusion in advance because they knew I would have objected and that I was not guilty. They knew that I, they, had they met me in any way, even in the mail, I would have said, now, wait a minute, this is wrong. You made a mistake here. These are not correct quotes. You are condemning me because elements within the American government sent you outtakes in order to destroy a conservative. Don't you understand that? This has uh, the hands of the Democrats all over it. That's my opinion. We can't prove it yet. But the longer this goes on and the deeper we get into discovery, my suspicion is the oily tracks will run right into the Democrat Party or one of their front groups, of which there are many. And God forbid this turns out to be true for them. That's all I can say because I will pursue them to the ends of the earth in the courts. They go on to say issue whether to exclude Savage from the UK on grounds of unacceptable behavior. Now let me stop there again. Unacceptable behavior. To the British, unacceptable behavior is speech. Speech is now unacceptable behavior. Particularly conservative nationalist speech. Now, there are no concentration camps or gulags in England, but there are thought police with unprecedented powers to dictate what people shall think and what people shall say. Nikolai Bukharin claimed that one of the Bolshevik Revolution's principal tasks was to, quote, alter people's psychology. Bukharin, one of the founders of the Bolshevik Revolution, the Communist Revolution in Russia, said that one of the principal tasks of the revolution was, quote, to alter people's psychology. Now, you know that the Democrats are trying to alter your psychology. You know that the British are altering the people's psychology to the point that they won't even be able to defend themselves. You know that the government moved ahead to criminalize politically incorrect jokes. You know that there have been draconian punishments, including the arrest and criminal prosecution of even children for thought crimes and offenses against political correctness in the new, uh, the new, the new, uh, the new Britain. I can give you one case after another. In September of '06, a 14-year-old schoolgirl, Cody Stott, asked a teacher if she could sit with another group to do a science project, as all the girls with her spoke only Urdu. The teacher's first response, according to the child, was to scream at her. It's racist. You're going to get done by the police, said the teacher. Upset and terrified, the schoolgirl went outside to calm down. The British teacher called the police, and a few days later, presumably after official them and thought the matter over, she was arrested and taken to a police station where she was fingerprinted and photographed. According to her mother, this child was placed in a bare cell for three and a half hours. She was questioned on suspicion of committing a racial public order offense and then released without charge. That's the Britain of compassion and mercy? No, that's the Britain of the new Bolsheviks. That is the Britain that took Michael Savage, white male conservative from America, honored broadcaster, loved by millions of ordinary American people, and said that because he believes, amongst other things, he said, we have to, quote, take back our borders, our language, and our traditional culture from the left, Eroding our great, corroding our great nation, close quote. For those reasons, uh, he will be considered banned in Britain. Ladies and gentlemen of the Savage Jury, I ask you to go to my website and look at the defamation letter filed yesterday, the new one, to Jackie Smith. We act for Michael Savage. We wrote to you on 15th of May in your capacity as Home Secretary. We blah, 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 blah. Our client is a citizen of the United States of America. He is under the name Michael Savage, the host of the successful radio program, The Savage Nation. Syndicated across America by Talk Radio Network and also a successful author on contemporary American politics and mores. Now, let's stop for a minute. They could have reached me through Talk Radio Network, 
They could have reached me through any one of 350 stations. They could have reached me through my publishers, but they chose not to. They said they will not notify me because his exact whereabouts are unknown. They're liars. They're, de they're deceptive, aren't they? The uh, press release that they put out, my lawyer says, contains statements that are false and defamatory of our client. Please treat this letter as a letter of claim under the pre-action protocol for defamation. We attach for your convenience a copy of your press release. The press release constituted a page headed promoters of hatred, named and shamed, and a further page of the list headed home office name hate promoters excluded from the UK listing various individuals who had been banned from entering the UK. The list included several individuals who were accused of terrorism and then stated as follows in respect to Michael Savage, quote, controversial daily radio host considered to be engaging in unacceptable behavior by seeking to provoke others to serious criminal acts and fostering hatred which might lead to intercommunity violence now let me pause right there by that definition anybody could be banned from britain for anything any liberal could be banned from britain should a conservative government take over and believe me a conservative government will take over next may these bums will be thrown out next may now, if this list were to stay, any liberal member of the Obama administration who has come out against anyone who opposed Obama and called him a racist could, by definition, be seen as provoking others to foster hatred and could lead to intercommunity violence. Anybody who attended a town hall meeting in the United States of America and spoke out as a free American citizen to all inspector, Barbara Boxer, you name it, could be seen as provoking intercommunity violence. For that matter... The, the uh, senators and the congressmen themselves could be seen as fostering hatred, which might lead to intercommunity violence. In fact, the hatred fostered by the liberal fascists in this country have led to intercommunity anger, but not yet to intercommunity violence. My point is, though, that by this broad definition, this fascistic definition, this large basket, this large net, anybody could be named and shamed <coughs> by Britain. And excluded. In addition, my lawyer says the first page stated that those who have been banned included, quote, controversial daily radio host who provoked others to commit crimes, close quote. Given that our client was the only radio host to appear on the list, this statement would evidently be taken to relate to him. These statements would taken together be understood by readers of the press release to mean that our client has sought to provoke others to commit serious criminal acts and who has on more than one occasion in fact provoked others to commit criminal acts. The press release was also published and continues to be published on the Home Office website, in both the news and press release sections, and on the UK Border Agency website. He then goes on to say the allegations are entirely false. At no time has our client provoked or sought to provoke others to commit crimes or serious criminal acts. Well, that's a truism. Are my words criminal? Are there liberals listening to this show who think that my words are criminal? If you say that, and I'm sure some of you would say that, I want to remind you to be very careful what you say. Because you now are becoming a fascist. You're now saying you don't believe in the First Amendment. You're now saying you believe in censorship. You're now saying you believe in exclusion. You're now saying you believe in closing borders. You now say you believe that you shall have the sole right to determine what is uh, fair and what is unfair. Be, be very careful because you're soon going to find out that you're not the good person you think you are. You are, in fact, the very worst person you've always feared your entire life. And let me bring it back to Lockerbie and the bomber. Scottish Justice Senator Kenny McCaskill explains why the Lockerbie bomber was released. Listen to clip. Uh, uh, let's do the, the number two. Our justice system demands that judgment be imposed, but compassion be available. Our beliefs dictate that justice be served, but mercy be shown. Compassion and mercy are about upholding the beliefs that we seek to live by, remaining true to our values as a people, no matter the severity of the provocation or the atrocity perpetrated. Regardless of the provocation or the atrocity perpetrated, they believe in compassion and mercy. Then why doesn't it apply to me? My friends, it has nothing to do with compassion and mercy. It has to do with cowardice and fear. They fear the radical Muslims in their own homeland. They fear what will happen to them if they continue to show any... Uh, 
any guts, any true grit. And so instead of closing their nation to the true enemies, instead of giving the death sentence to their true enemies, they give a sentence that may as well be a death sentence to a man whose politics they disagree with. If they could, they probably would give me the death penalty. But I want to remind you of the following. I want to remind you that my lawyer has put on record the following. Quote, their own research, their own researchers, their own emails say the following. Page two. They found in page two, quote, quote, now this is quoting their own emails. Quote, there is no evidence of savage advocating or inciting violence. Close quote. So one of their own researchers found that to be that there was no evidence of savage advocating or inciting violence. Close quote. My lawyer then says, no, notwithstanding this information, you agreed to publish the press release, which stated expressly that our clients sought to provoke criminal acts. So why did they go ahead with this when they knew that it was false? I will read you further emails from Band in Britain and my lawyer's letter of yesterday. We will tie it into the lies we are hearing coming out of Scotland about releasing the Lockerbie bomber, and I will show you that it was purely motivated purely on political grounds. Them banning Michael Savage was purely because I am a nationalist, I am a conservative, and I am outspoken. 1-800-449-8255 or go to michaelsavage.com to see Band in Britain. I'll be right back. I beg your indulgence, and I will ask my audience right now, my dear audience, whether or not you wish me to continue with this case which is consuming me, because I will free my name, if I can, with your help. With your help, I will, and with the publicity that you're going to help me get by circulating the book Band in Britain. You're going to make this cause and this case as important as it should be. And I, I beg your indulgence, because it's consuming me. One of their own emails says there is no evidence that Savage advocated or incited violence. Yet they went ahead and published a press release which stated expressly that Savage did psych, uh, seek to provoke criminal acts. Uh, you know, you can read all this on my website, but most of you, you know, are listening to a radio show in a car or whatever. The bottom line is another email that we found says that by putting Savage on the list, it would, quote, help to provide a balance of types of exclusion cases. You know, I read this this morning when I got it. I felt as though I was reading... Uh, documents that have been discovered in the archives of the Third Reich, something in the rubble of uh, Hitler's bunker. I thought that I was looking at something not from England, the country I've always admired and loved. I've always been an Anglophile. I still ha admire the British people. I pray to God that they wake up before it's too late. But when I saw these these clinically efficient little snotty emails going back and forth between these these people... These people who went to public schools and apparently never worked a day in their lives, these trust fund cases, who were given these jobs because of family connections, I was shocked by the clinical efficiency of their emails. One says to the other, like a schoolboy, I will hold down the fort while you are away. Hold down the fort? Your grandfather might have held down the fort, but my friend, you're not holding down the fort. You listed a man who's innocent with terrorists and murderers because you don't like his politics and because he's loud and because he's vociferous and because he's offensive and because he's shocking. Winston Churchill said that it is shocking speech that should be protected. I've told you a thousand times on this show, polite speech does not need protection. Polite speech does not need a First Amendment. In fact, the European Union itself has a code about free speech which says, which says that Shocking speech itself must be maintained as legal. You understand this. New York, Frank, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, uh, Michael. Well, you know, I, I've been outraged since this whole thing began against you. I'm further outraged by the uh, the lack of media response and the alleged representatives that have completely... It's unbelievable to me. I can't understand how the legislation, the legislators in America... Not one of them has picking up, picking this case. How is it possible? No, it's a complete disgrace, quite frankly. And to be honest with you, I mean, you're exposing the tyranny, and I'm glad you're spending so much time. But my biggest outrage is the fact that you're compared to a terrorist. I mean, I'm a 9/11 firefighter, survived that, and one of my partners 
His mother, father, and pregnant sister were killed on that flight. And Which, was, wait, on the Lockerbie flight, you mean that the terrorist was, was released to Libya today? Absolutely. And the, All right, so how do you feel with him coming home to a hero's welcome? Compassion that this man had left in his heart. Today, I can't imagine the pain he's going through. I mean, he's a shell of a human being, and the fact that you were ever compared on any level, or they, they draw parallels to you, who you only speak of conservative values, whether they disagree or not. I mean, this is a tyranny of the absolute... Frank, it is a tyranny. It's fascism. That's what I've been screaming about now for months, trying to get my name off the list. They won't let it go. They know they're liars. They know they shouldn't have put me on the list. Their own email says I was in, say I'm innocent, that I didn't commit any crimes. And they went ahead and did this anyway. They crucified me, but they only put one spike in one hand. And I still have a free hand and two free feet. Savage. You are listening to Michael Savage Archives on Really Big Something Channel. Hear ye, hear ye. The court of the Savage Nation is now in session. The Honorable Judge Michael Savage presiding. All rise. Yeah, all rise. You're the only thing I've got in this world for justice. I have nobody in the media. I have nobody in the Republican Party. I have nobody in the government that will uh, help me get off the list of murderers and terrorists. And yet, and yet the compassionate British government in Scotland has released a uh, terrorist who was the mastermind of Lockerbie, who was in prison for having masterminded blowing up the Pan Am flight and killing hundreds of people. And the judge who released him said he did so out of compassion and mercy. Listen to uh, clip three now, please. For these reasons, and these reasons alone, it is my decision that Mr. Abdel Bassett Ali Mohamed Al-Megrahi, convicted in 2001... The Lockerbie bombing, now terminally ill with prostate cancer, be released on compassionate grounds and are allowed to return to Libya to die. Well, he went home not to die, but to enjoy a hero's welcome and to be a role model and a mentor to the next generation of terrorists, apparently. Even Obama said that they shouldn't have done it. Even Obama said it was a mistake. Listen to Obama in clip five, you liberals. We, we have wanna, been wait, wait, hold on. You, you liberals who want to gang up on me and say one thing has nothing to do with another. You liberals who want to condemn me and crucify me. Listen to Obama. We, we have been in contact with the Scottish government uh, in, indicating uh, that we objected to this. And uh, we thought it was a mistake. Uh, we're now in contact with the Libyan government and want to make sure that... Uh, if, in fact, this transfer has taken place, that uh, he's not welcomed back uh, in some way, but instead should be under house arrest. All right, let's stop right there. So Obama was opposed to releasing a Lockerbie bomber, so he says. I'm not so sure I believe it, number one. I believe he's uh, doing damage control. I believe that somebody in the State Department definitely was consulted. Would be my opinion. Somebody from Scotland went to uh, one of the people in our nanny state and asked them what they think and they said sure go ahead release them after all we're now talking to kim jong il we're talking to amana jad we want to make nice to libya sure release them go ahead and then all of a sudden the blowback came at them and suddenly obama's stepping and saying it was a mistake so maybe he didn't know about it but i'm sure somebody in the state department did know about it in advance now we go back to michael savage being banned in britain they won't release my name even though they've been shown to be uh, they made a mistake they say they have compassion and mercy how about with me so they have compassion and mercy for a radical Muslim terrorist, but no compassion and mercy for a right-wing, conservative, American talk show host who believes in borders, language, and culture. In their emails, we found the following, and this is the most important one for you to listen to. Here's my lawyer says in an email between the Home Office, timed at 12.48 and 27 November 08, that there had been discussion within the Home Office that disclosure of the decision to exclu exclude Savage would, quote, help provide a balance of types of, ex of exclusion cases. Balance of types? What do they mean by that? Oh, I see. They're going to balance it so they put in a white man, conservative nationalist, to make it not look like they're worried about the Muslim extremists amongst them. You see? Well... I'll, I'll, I'll rest, not my case, but for the moment, I'm not going to read any more about what they did to me. 
But the fact is that in their press release, they said that I am an individual who would glorify terrorist violence. This is the very same government that just had a sister government in Scotland release an actual murderer and terrorist for compassionate and mer merciful reasons. They said that I glorify terrorist violence. The exact opposite is true. I've spent every day trying to warn you about and against terrorist violence, trying to tell you to defend your nation against terrorist violence. They then said that I have a racist website. Is the Savage Nation, is michaelsavage.com racist? Can anyone find one article on the website that is racist? Does anything on my website promote serious criminal activity and foster hatred? Well, if it does, then they better arrest everybody in the Associated Press, the Daily News, the New York Post, and every other newspaper that's linked there, because I don't write original articles for that website. They also say that on this list, they put a man in jail. For, uh, they put me in with a man who spent 30 years in, in an Israeli prison for killing four soldiers and a four-year-old Jewish girl who they bashed their heads in with a, with a rifle, but I'm on the same list as him. I'm on a list with an individual in Russia, member of a violent gang that beat immigrants to death and posted film, films of their attacks on the Internet. They listed me with him. They said that the list was intended to name and shame Michael Savage. And the press release defamed me. So there it is. And it closes by saying, uh, in order to remedy your action in respect of the press release, our client requires that you respond with 14 days of letter that is, is on page stem 1, 2009, the following one. The payment to you by you to our client of a substantial sum of damages to be agreed be the sending by you to our client of a letter in terms of the form to be agreed upon with our client, which can then be circulated at our client's discretion to include a retraction of the allegations, a personal apology from you, and an acknowledgement that you have agreed to pay a substantial sum in libel damages to our client. See a written undertaking for you not to repeat the allegations complained of. And see the payment by you of our client's legal course of dealing with this matter. If I do not hear from you in these terms, says my lawyer, our client will issue proceedings against you forthwith. In the meantime, our client reserves all his rights. Very sincerely yours, the law firm in London. There's not one mention of this in the blog, in the American media. Not on Fox News. They won't touch it. The big conservatives wrap themselves in the flag. Not one mention of this case. Not one letter from one Republican congressman, not one Republican senator, has come to my aid and said, this is an outright savage. This is wrong. We're going to help you. We're going to circulate a letter to help you. Not one of them. You know why? Can you put two and two together? Because it was Michael Savage who attacked George Bush for eight straight years. In fact, we've researched this, and this started during George Bush's reign. We believe this was initiated under George Bush. Because I, my friends, I, my friends, was the first to call Bush out for what he was doing to this country. I, my friends, was the first to tell you that his attempted appointment of Harriet Myers to the Supreme Court would have been a, an outrage. She was his personal lawyer. I called her a non-entity. And I marshaled thousands of you to write emails saying, no, Bush can't put her on the Supreme Court. I don't know if you remember this. I stopped the appointment of Harriet Myers to the Supreme Court, George Bush's personal lawyer from Texas. But more importantly, I cost the Bushies billions of dollars because they try to pull a Trojan horse on you. If you remember what I did, do you remember what I did? Tell me what I did that incited anger within the Bush administration, the corrupt Bush administration, that probably triggered this entire name and shame thing and put in a list with murderers and terrorists. Does anyone remember what you did? How many thousands or hundreds of thousands of you joined with me? I even had Charles Schumer on the show agreeing with me. I had left and right agreeing with me. Well, I'll save you a step. They wanted to have a firm from the Middle East take over security at nine of our ports, including a military base in Texas. That's right. They were going to take people from Dubai and give them control over all of our security data at nine or ten American uh, uh, shipping ports. I went nuts on this show. I stopped that cold. I remember Bush even sent out one of his dumb relatives, a dumb nephew, who said that it was racist for me to do it. Do you remember the language? He said it was racist of me to say that there was danger in, in, in blocking the Dubai ports deal. Do you remember those days? So my friends, the oily tracks run back to both parties, which is why not one Republican has come to my aid, because they are as duplicitous 
and as complicit as the Democrats are in the destruction of our borders, our language, and our culture. I rest my case. I'll be right back. Well, notwithstanding the Home Secretary's answer, she will be aware that the things of which she accuses Mike Savage is equally illegal in the United States of America, and he has not faced prosecution there. So does she realize how ludicrous her ban is? Does she realize the disrepute she has put this country in, in the eyes of many right-seeing people, and indeed left-seeing people, in the United States of America? And does she equally plan to ban Howard Stern, Russ Limbaugh, and other middle-aged, white, ordinary American radio presenters? That, here, here, that's conservative British MP, notice I say the conservative, on 51809 in Parliament, uh, Mr. Fabricant, saying it was an outrage what was done to me. Meanwhile, my name is still on the list because the liberals are still ruling with uh, uh, gold lame heels. And so, therefore, I twist in the wind. No help from Rush Limbaugh, no help from the Republicans, no help from Fox News, no help from the painted ladies on Fox News. And so when you hear them talk about their principled outrage and their moral indignation about Obama, you have to ask yourself, do they really mean it? That's all I can say. Let's go to the callers, please. I hope you'll go to michaelsavage.com and download the letter from my lawyer, uh, setting the record straight. It was posted just this, uh, hours ago. I want you to see what they said about me behind the scenes and uh, how duplicitous they have been and how they've dug their heels in and why I must fight to free my name and reputation and to really recover my <laughs> freedom of travel and freedom of speech and how it goes well beyond one man. It goes well beyond one man and how the book Banned in Britain is so important a seminal book for anyone's library who believes in freedom. Alan Las Vegas, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, uh, it's really a matter here of you don't know why you're on this list. Uh, you're taking it personal. Well, Al, what, what are you talking about? What do you mean I don't know why I'm on the list? What are you talking about? Uh, in terms, I just of spent an hour and a half explaining that they put me on the list because they wanted a damn a white man t so they didn't look like they were just picking on Muslims. What do you mean I don't know why I'm on the list? You keep talking about a list of terrorists. They didn't put, call you a terrorist. They put you on a list saying they don't want you to come into England. And it's as obvious, really. Wait, as wait, 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 hold it. Your, your mind is slipping. Why would they put a talk show host on a list with murderers and terrorists? Oh, you're on a list. They don't want you in England. And there's also terrorists who are... Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a minute. So you think that's fair of them? Well, it's, it's as obvious as today's Lockerbie decision, which, you know, you're a smart guy, and it's, it's really a matter here of, uh, it's as simple as why do Scotsmen wear kilts? Because Al, you, Al, you know, you have, you, have, you have memory lapses, Al. You really should never call the show. I feel bad for you, Al. Don't ever call the show, please, Al. You never should have gotten on the air. Okay, that's a call screening mistake, but these things happen. I feel bad for that guy. Let's go to the next caller. Wisconsin, Kathy, welcome to the program. Thank you, Dr. Savage, and God bless you for your courageous, true speech. I pray for you every night, Dr. Savage. This whole thing reminds me of Free Barabbas. They're letting this lunatic, this terrorist, off out of mercy. And they can't show mercy to someone with a courageous voice like you. God bless you, Dr. Savage. God bless you. Thank you, Kathy. God bless you for the call. Thank you. Kansas City, Jeff, welcome to the program. Go ahead, please. Yes, Dr. Savage, you are unmasking a big brother. You threaten the elites both here and abroad, and they know it. Okay, and they fear the, the anger of the masses that is stirring beneath this facade of tranquility that the media presents. Mm. They fear it. They understand it's real, and they should. Because they well, it's interesting that you should say that. In other words, one could say it's a great honor to have been put on such a list because I've gotten to them, and they're terrified of the truth, and they're terrified of the reality awakening the, the drunken soccer thugs in England from their stupor. Uh, where they might take the country back. I understand all of that, Jeff. Meanwhile, the fact is is that I'm twisting in the wind, and there is great danger in being on such a list, Jeff. There, there's no honor in being on this list. There's only danger, Jeff. And I don't have to spell out why there is danger in being on such a list, do I? 
Absolutely not. But you're competing up against a bunch of self-serving egomaniacs like Sean Hannity, the leprechaun Bill O'Reilly. Or they, they trumpet these values. They don't stick up for you, which is pure cowardice, because it, anyone with a half of a mind knows it could be them next. Okay? Well, I, I wouldn't save all my wrath for them. I, I just consider them to be entertainers who uh, don't want to rise to the occasion. I mean, frankly, if you want to talk about them one more time, I will. The, the greatest thing they could do for their own um, reputation would be to say, you know, even though Savage has said things about me that are horrible, and I really despise what he's called me. He called me wall banger. He called me leprechaun. He called me golfer. I don't like it. It got very personal. I think he was petty and childish. He shouldn't have done it, and I resent it. But there's a bigger principle here, and for that reason, I'm going to have Michael Savage on the Bill O'Reilly show, meaning O'Reilly could say that, or Hannity could get off his stupidity and say, even though he said these things about me, I'm going to show him a bigger man. But they're not bigger men, Jeff. That's the point. They are cowards. They're not bigger men. This is a golden opportunity for them to show that they're bigger men, but they won't and can't do it. And they rule Fox News like a lockdown. The painted girls are afraid to touch me. You know, in the beginning, the painted girls were on my side because they understand what's at stake here. But the painted ladies of Fox News have been warned, probably by the shillelagh holder, uh, not to talk about Michael Savage. Well, that's their loss, and I don't care about him anymore. I don't need them. I need you. I need you. Because one day, the truth will come out. One day, I'm telling you as I stand here, I will get... Look, my next goal is, is I'm trying to get this book to press, Banned in Britain. And we're in the last phases, copy editing before the printer, etc. You're buying the book in droves. It's doing well, so don't think I'm doing it for the buck. Okay, it's not. It's just more taxes and more money to give away. I'm doing it to get the message out. I want a document of what was done to an innocent man, so it's not done again. I want you to have this document so that you know what these private school boys in England did to me. These snotty louts who never worked a day in their life, given these jobs through political connections, writing these snitty little notes to each other in this clinical manner that you would say it was right out of the Third Reich. That's what it looks like to me. Only it's not conservatives who did it. It's good old compassionate liberals. Savage. It's so important that we pass health insurance reform. I know there's been a lot of misinformation in this debate, and there are some folks out there who are, frankly, bearing false witness. So Obama says that there are people putting out misinformation, that's the new Democrat Party line, and that there are people who are bearing false witness. I agree with him. The question is, who in his administration is putting out misinformation, and who in his administration is bearing false witness? The answer is all of them. Now, the reason I say that, and again, I speak boldly, is because it's true. I will prove with the following news article, which we linked up from the Associated Press on michaelsavage.com, that there are people very close to Obama who are putting out misinformation, and there are people very close to Obama who are bearing false witness specifically to make millions of dollars. Now, this information came out today from the Associated Press that his chief of staff, uh, who has a name named Axelrod, uh, once was involved with some consulting companies that now have the contracts to put out the information, or some would say the misinformation in this debate, uh, and the government is funding it, or the Democrat Party is funding it to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. And so I agree with the president when he says there's a lot of misinformation in this debate, and I agree with the president further when he says that there are some out there who are bearing false witness. I would also add to that list any Democrat who has called a town hall uh, uh, goers, um, <clears throat> various names, including Nazi or un-American. That would include uh, Arlen Specter, Barbara Boxer, and the others who claim that the American people are bearing uh, false witness and putting out misinformation. And so, again, I refer you to my website, where I try to find the best articles from all of the press sources. Obama's men make millions from health care push, I ask. Came from the Associated Press. It says, and I'm quoting now, Obama's push for national health care overhaul is providing a financial windfall to Democratic consulting firms closely connected. Cl now, pay attention. Not with Republicans now. President Barack Obama's push for national health care overhaul is providing a financial windfall in the election offseason to Democratic consulting firms 
that are closely connected to the president and two top advisors, says the Associated Press. Coalitions of interest groups running at least $24 million in pro-overhaul ads hired GMMB, which worked for Obama's 08 campaign, and whose partners included top Obama campaign strategists. They also hired a key PD message and media, which was founded by David Axelrod, a top advisor to Obama's campaign and now in the White House, uh, to the White House. AKPD, AKPD did work for Obama's campaign, and Axelrod's son, Michael, and Obama's campaign manager, David Ploof, worked there. The firms were hired by Americans for Stable Quality Care and its predecessor, Healthy Economy Now. Each was formed by a coalition of interests, now listen very carefully, with big stakes in health care policy. I want you to listen to who wants Obamacare, the drug maker lobby, PHRMA, the AMA, the SEIU, the Service Employees International Union, and Families USA. Now, why would pharmaceutical companies and their lobbying groups, why would the AMA, which is big medicine, why would they want health care reform? Huh? The same reasons that they uh, put out misinformation about vitamins on a daily basis. The same reason they are opposed to self-help. The same reason they attack nutritional information on a daily basis. The same reason they push you into drugs and into surgery and into unnecessary procedures. Because they're going to make trillions of dollars over a 10-year period. They are, in fact, behind Obama's health care overhaul. It has nothing to do with saving money. But there are other groups that want health care reform. They would include La Raza, who are now inside the White House. I want to add, by the way, there's no evidence that Axelrod directly profited from the group's ads, according to this article. They say that Axelrod took steps to separate himself from AKPD, AKPD when he joined Obama's White House. Ha! Ha! Just as George Bush's minions did, huh? You mean when Halliburton was accused of war profiteering? You liberals let that go, huh? By the way, AKPD owes Axelrod $2 million from his stock sale and will make preset payments over four years starting with $350,000 on December 31, according to Axelrod's personal financial disclosure report. I ask you good liberals, you're all so fair, if this was a Republican administration that came out that Karl Rove had been a, uh, had a, owned, a, owned a firm and uh, the firm was now getting some of the $24 million in pro-overhaul ads, what would be going on? On the show, for example, on MSNBC, where the uh, gentleman allegedly urinates on himself uh, because his leg shakes so much and he can't control his bladder. Tell me what he'd be saying tonight. So there it is. $24 million in ads. And these companies are making a good portion of those ads. And there's no talk about ethics rules for this administration. They've blown it out of the fence. They've blown a hole through the fence of any ethics uh, rules whatsoever. There are no ethic rules in the Obama administration. There's only horse manure. AKPD has a full page on Axelrod that includes pictures of Obama. In one photo, Obama hugs Plouffe on election night. I'll read the article. I didn't write it. Of course, now you could call the Associated Press racist. That would be the next attack. The author from the Associated Press of this article entitled Firms with Obama Ties Profit from Health Push was written by a Sharon Themer, T-H-E-I-M-E-R. I suppose now she will be banned uh, from the White House. Now you understand about health care, what it's all about? It's all about money. Now let's go back to my dilemma. Because the corruption of liberalism is something to behold. But that's not limited to liberalism. It's the hypocrisy of liberalism that's most worrisome. So now let's go to the callers and see what you think. W-O-R, New York. Jesse, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes, uh, Dr. Savage, I don't wish to sound like the devil's advocate. I like to see England change their mind, but I seriously doubt that will not happen. I lived in England I experienced, for one year. I experienced a similar situation to yours in which I was uh, invited to leave. Uh, and I could tell you now that from my observations, uh, they don't, England does not want to jeopardize their relationship with Saudi money. Uh, they own... Uh, a great deal of property in England, probably the lion's share of England. Well, let's and, go back uh, to Princess. Let's go back to Princess Diana and Harrods in that little event. Well, you know, I can't comment much on that. All I could say is, from my own experience, I could tell you that they. Uh, I'm Harrods. saying that because the owner of Harrods happens to be a Saudi, uh, originally from Saudi Arabia. Is that not true? Yes. Uh huh. 
Yes, yeah, so I seem to. I, I realize what you're saying now, but what yeah, I want uh-huh, to bring out uh-huh, with this clarity. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. In other words, in other words, England may be a wholly owned subsidiary of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Is what you're implying? Uh, that's uh, that, yes, exactly. Uh huh. Well, let's go to the next step. How about George Bush being led around by his finger by the King of Saudi Arabia? Yes, this too. How about it's Obama old- bending over and having a necklace put on his neck like it was a rock star by the King of Saudi Arabia? Yes, it's the Almighty Buck. You know, mm-hmm. Now you understand why when a man speaks about borders, language, and culture, he becomes an enemy of the new world order? Yes, they're going to trade. Okay, well now you understand what my book is about. Band in Britain is not just about this case with England. It's about the fact that they picked on me because I am trying to save the sovereignty of America, the sovereignty of England, the sovereignty of France, the sovereignty of Germany, the sovereignty of Norway, the sovereignty of Spain, every Western nation right now has been overrun by international interests. We do not know who actually pulls the strings. And I'm trying to awaken the nationalist spirits in all of these nations. Do you understand that? Yes, but I'd like to add one little thing, Dr. Savage, if I may, please. Why not avenge yourself? Think, think, why, not, why not harness the energy that you, that you possess, like no other in this country, and you take your listeners and yourself and put us into the White House the next time around. Think of, uh, you think England's going to say, oh, we can't let the President of the United States into the country? I mean, it would be, you know... This, well, this wait, what do you I'm mean saying. put us into the White House? I missed that, Jesse. What do you mean? Vent. Wait, wait, what do you mean put us into the White House? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean the conservative, uh, the conservative uh, uh, movement. All right, well, okay, good. That's a great question. Name one. Name who one conservative? Dr. Yeah, tell me which conservative you want in the White House. Who did you? Who? Cindy McCain? No, yourself. No, I'm not a politician. I am absolutely not a politician. In fact, I'm going to repeat what I said Friday. When my name is off this list, when I've gotten the justice I deserve, I will soon thereafter leave radio. This is the last straw for me. I don't want to pay this price anymore. I have paid too much for this career. That's all I'm going to, I'm going to say it again. I pay too much for it. I'm not going to take it anymore. I'm not going to be the sacrificial lamb for the tens of millions of Americans who were doing nothing for me. I'm not going to be the sacrificial lamb for uh, the uh, talk show hosts who do nothing for me. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to leave it all. I don't want to be around this anymore. I don't want to take it anymore. Moreover, I'll tell you something else. You think there's no danger in being uh, the nail that sticks out of the board? You think that there's no danger in fighting the British government, you think they're so benign? You, f- you really believe they're malarkey, that they're so nice? You think that there's no danger in standing up to them and saying that there's collusion between them and the U.S. government? Well, let me remind you of something. Um, I have very little to do with anybody right now. I'm almost never out of my houses. I rarely leave my houses. And when I do, I'm very guarded. I rarely go to see any of my friends. I cannot speak with them about anything because I'm only interested in getting my uh, name and reputation back. I do not have time to talk about the weather. I do not have time to talk about uh, meals right now. So it's taken a a very dramatic toll on uh, this one American. And it's one man alone. And the only thing I have is you. Do you understand that? So let's go back now to the issue of the Scottish geniuses releasing the Lockerbie bomber today for compassionate and merciful reasons. They have compassion and mercy is what I always thought the British did have in in modern times. I was always impressed with the British people for being compassionate and merciful and tough, by the way, tough enough to fight Hitler. They gave the flower of their young men in the Battle of Britain. They all came out of the the best schools. I don't think you know that, but most of the fighter pilots of World War II were men from the better schools and from very, very, you know, higher-end families in England. They went into the Air Force out of national pride. It was required of them to show that they had the daring do and pride. And they lost so many of them. And instead, they wound up with Jackie Smith as Home Secretary instead of a war hero from Iraq. Instead of having a man who actually saw the face of a man chanting to Allah while cutting off his head uh, in Iraq... They put in Jackie Smith. Instead of taking one of their own war heroes from Iraq or Afghanistan and putting him into the home office job, because he would, he would know better than anybody what, what danger they are in, they put in uh, Jackie Smith. You understand what I'm saying to you? 
So let's go back to the callers. Again, I invite you to go to michaelsavage.com. I'd like to have the callers, uh, Tucson, Arizona. TJ, welcome to the program. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir, Dr. Savage. Uh, I disagree with your problem over there in England. It has to do with the fact that you're a white guy. I think it has to do with the fact that you're the only commentator out there talking about how the DNC and the RNC has been taken over by a bunch of Marxist oligarchs. Well, but when this was done to me, it was George Bush. And although he was a pre-Marxist oligarch, he was not yet a Marxist oligarch. And if you read their, their emails going back and forth to each other, going back to November uh, of 08, they say that putting Michael Savage in a list would, quote, provide a balance of types of exclusion cases. So what do they mean by a balance of types? Was that based on the fact that I'm not uh, a Muslim? What do you mean a balance of types? Why did they pick me? What, what, what type am I? Tell me what type I am. I don't know. Maybe before, uh, during the Bush administration, some of the things you were saying um, kind of let that you were leaning in that direction. Maybe you weren't making those direct Well, statements. maybe, yeah. When I stopped the Dubai Ports deal, when I stopped uh, Harriet Myers from getting, getting put on the Supreme Court, I would say that pissed off George Bush and his minions. I would think so. That's, maybe that's where your problem started, because if you're right... No, I agree with you. I, I just said to you, I think it goes all the way back to Bush. I didn't say that it started with Obama. I never said that. Um, I'm not I never said that. In fact, if Obama really wanted to make points with the independents, he would intervene right now and say, Get, you know what? I don't like Michael Savage's politics, but he has a right to speak them, and I want you to take his name off the list. That would add 10 points to his popularity tomorrow. Do you know that? Yes. I have 10 million listeners, for God's sakes, who have 10 million friends. And look who show he goes on to talk about health care. A false conservative who voted for him. You hear this? The Obama goes on conservative show to talk about health care. A, a, a guy show, no one ever heard of him. And the guy voted for him. He's a conservative like my dog is a conservative. Actually, I think my dog is probably more conservative than the, uh, the show he went on, the guy's show. It's unbelievable to me. You're going to believe that. All right, let's go to the callers again around the country. 1-800-449-8255. So you, you feel it's good that uh, the Scots released the bomber for compassionate reasons so he can go home to die in Libya. Well, he came home to a hero's welcome. Did you see the footage yet? You're going to see it later tonight. You're not going to believe it. The Scots released this bum, who was the mastermind of the Lockerbie bombing, killed 200 and some odd people. And he went back to Libya to a hero's welcome. So young potential or young would-be terrorists now have a role model and a mentor. He will hold meetings. He will be held up as a role model. He not only killed many uh, Americans and British people, but he got away with it. He made a mockery of the weaklings in Scotland, because that's how they see it. He made a mockery of it. He used the laws of Scotland themselves to uh, pervert the laws, just as murderers do in America. Just as we have people on death row should have been executed 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, but they have shyster lawyers, mainly from Harvard and NYU, who continue to uh, spin lies how uh, they were this and how they were that. Just as we have too many people on death row, 99.9% uh, .9 of whom are, are guilty, guilty of sin, they come up with new fake rules every other day of why they shouldn't be executed. The same liberalism, the same false compassion, the same big lie is being put out by the Scots today saying why they uh, released the Lockerbie bomber. Now, I would believe it if I believed it, but I don't believe a word of it. I believe that they released uh, whatever his name is, not out of compassion and mercy, but out of fear, fear, and terror. And I'll be right back. All right, so we're talking about uh, the Obama minions tied to profiteering from the uh, health care uh, thing. Billions and billions of dollars a year are going to be made by his friends. And you say nothing. You think it's about a universal health care. You know, you're easily duped. You liberals are not that smart. You're easily duped. You're led around by your nose and your emotions. Read the article. Firms with Obama ties profit from health push tied into the drug manufacturers and the AMA. The AMA is into uh, a kind of medicine that's very exploitive and very expensive. Okay? That's the absolute reality of anybody who understands medicine and alternative healing. Read the article. I didn't write it. The Associated Press did. Now let's go back to Band in Britain, my book, which you will buy. Most of you will on michaelsavage.com and why I was banned. It goes all the way back to Bush. 
they never forgot the fact that I marshaled, I don't know, maybe hundreds of thousands of you to send emails, to send uh, emails and letters to your congressmen and senators saying, do not let the people in Dubai take over our port security. Bush then wheeled out some child re- relative of his named Pierce Bush, who turns out to be Neil Bush's son. Neil Bush is the man of the SNL fame. Remember the SNL scandal, Neil Bush? Well, apparently he has a genius of a son named Pierce Bush, who accused anyone of opposing the Dubai port deal of being a racist. Listen. It's not about ports. It's not about security. It's about, you know, underlying prejudice that exists towards Arabs. And, you know, it's sad because, honestly, I think we're going in the wrong direction towards making our country more secure. People, you have to, you yeah. have to be very careful about being, you know, prejudiced. Prejudice. <laughs> chip off the old block <laughs> prejudice well I'll tell you this his uh, lingo and his delivery and his brain level would match that of uh, McCain's daughter Megan I think they should hook up I, I, I really like to be a matchmaker I would do that marriage they're invited out on my boat I would marry Pierce Bush and Megan McCain any day because these two are made for each other listen to Megan McCain now it can be a party for a 24 year old pro sex woman it can be i just think that we have people that are in this party that are hijacking and trying to make it even more extreme <laughs> i rest my case <laughs> i rest my case this is the progeny that they produce banned in britain you know what i'm proud to be an american i'm proud of who i am and by the way add these people to your list Not one Jewish group has come to my aid. Not the ADL, not one rabbi, not one rabbinical group, not one biblical group. Not one Jewish group has come to my aid. Oh, but they're still living in the past. They would have stopped Hitler, would they? Savage.